Couch Talk. Hello and welcome to Couch Talk. Today's guest is former India batsman and captain Rahul Dravid. We'll be talking about his methods to prepare for a test series, the adjustments he made to his technique based on the opposition and the conditions he faced, captaincy, his decision to retire from the game, and his new role as a commentator. Welcome to the show, Rahul. Uh, thanks, Abhash. Thanks. Pleasure to be on the show. Uh, it's absolutely my pleasure. Let's let's begin with how you prepare going into a test series. What are the things that uh, you paid attention to in terms of the conditions and the opposition? Specifically, you know, it's a bouncy surface or a turning surface, whether you're facing bowlers like Murli or Stain. Uh, what are the key things that you did that you wanted to see in place so that, uh, you know, you believe that you're in the right mental and physical space heading into the series? Uh so much, I mean, it, it just sort of depended on, on what, uh, where you were going and where you were playing and also just on the time available. I think, uh, you know, I, I found later on, especially when it was a period when I was playing, uh, when there's a lot of cricket being played, one day cricket and, and test cricket, you sort of moved from series to series and you didn't have uh, a lot of time in between necessarily to prepare. Uh, so much for a particular series. So the time when you went to that particular country, whether it was Australia, South Africa, or you know Sri Lanka, uh, the first, the week or the ten days that you had there was absolutely critical. And getting the quality of nets uh, that you wanted, uh, and getting the level of preparation that you needed. Um, from my point of view, obviously, especially early on in my career, uh, especially when I was going to sort of places which conditions which I wasn't necessarily so used to. Um, I would try and, you know, replicate it in some ways if possible. It's never easy and it's hard to replicate conditions of Australia and India, however much you try. Mm -hmm. But, you know, things like playing with a hard plastic ball or, you know, wet tennis ball, um, you know, practicing that. uh, I used to do a little bit of that. But also just in terms of... um, uh, maybe sometimes, you know, re- trying to recreate conditions, asking maybe the groundsman to leave a little bit of grass in the wicket um, when you practice in the nets, uh, maybe asking bowler to bowl from, you know, 18 yards or 20 yards, you know, sort of little ahead of the, uh, the crease uh, just for you to get used to the pace. So things like that maybe a little bit more early on in my career. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but as time went on later on, then I think, you know, you get used to the things, you adjust, you... Um, you know, different, maybe different bowlers you might think about if you're at different angles. If, if you're going to play a few left arm fast bowlers, then maybe you ask for a few left arm fast bowlers in the nets. But it's it's never the same. I mean, Jabash, you mm-hmm. can't, like if you're going out to play Murli, then I don't think you can find somebody <laughs> who's going to spin the ball as Murli, however much you might try, you know. Uh, or, or uh, you know, for example, if you were to go out and play, uh, you know, Avazi Makram, that kind of quality is very difficult to find in domestic cricket, so much ever you try. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we used to make the efforts, but I think the most important thing also was, over time, was uh, was when you went to that particular country, getting this used to the surfaces, um, just getting, you know, yourself in that right sort of physical, uh, physical, the physical fitness part of it was quite important to me. I like to be in, I, I felt I played my best cricket when I was at a certain um, level of physical fitness, mm-hmm. um, which in time over, uh, which in time I obviously uh, worked out what sort of seemed to work best for me. And I always tried to ensure that I was in and around those kind of, you know, numbers or targets that I set myself. Uh, but other than that, I mean, Subhash, not too much. I think maybe early on I did a bit more as time went on. I think as career, as you keep playing and you sort of going from one place to other, it's almost as important to recharge and get give your body rest as it is to keep practicing and preparing. So, you know, I, I guess it was a combination of a few things. Uh, fair enough. Uh, but uh, were there any specific adjustments you would make as you, you know, get going in a series? You know, perhaps um, there are things that uh, you would like to do but you aren't doing, but then so you adjust... I mean, minor technical adjustments you might make. I mean, through the course of your career, you might make minor technical adjustments. Uh, maybe in England, stand a little bit outside the crease if you felt it was swinging more. Um, I, I just think short selection is an important thing. I think you recognize that there were certain kinds of shots that you had to play in Australia. Uh, you had to have a strong back foot game in Australia, and you're going to need to cut and pull if you wanted to score runs there. In England, you need to you knew, know you needed to get a good stride forward because if it swung, then you know you needed to counter that. Uh, but um, so I just think more it was about like like I you know you know conditions. I mean you know in England that look if you know you by chance were to 
bat on the first morning of a test match where it is sizzling and seeming and you know that you have to get through that period and there are certain shots that you can't play during that period which you might be able to play later on when the ball gets softer and and, and a little older and, and maybe you know the sun comes out after lunch or tea so i think that that was important to get that mentally right in your head that certain when you're moving especially from country to country that uh, the kind of shots that you can play or you need to play uh might be different from place to place and that was a sort of mental adjustment more than anything and working on that in the net so when you went to that country and when you practiced then you sort of worked on that so i guess when i was in india i always in the net one of my focuses was to get fully forward in australia maybe was to ensure that i you know played a few of the shot squarer or the wicket so um it was this different kind of shots i think that you have to play i mean when you play in india on slow and learning learning wickets you obviously know you're going to play spinners so what are your shots and scoring options against spinners and and each one i guess is different in that point of view mm-hmm. we all have our strengths and weaknesses so what works for you and what you think are your strengths and how you want to keep building on those and and maybe if there are areas you feel that you can improve on or, or shots that you might need then you might work on that uh, so specific things um so yeah so i think each country was unique in that sense Okay let's say you get started in an inning what are uh, some of the indicators for you personally that uh, you know told you that you know you're batting well uh, your feet are uh, you know you're seeing the ball well etc cetera, etc cetera. or for that matter as a uh, listener uh, mahesh points out you know during the 2001 test against australia and uh, wankhede you know uh, mm-hmm. he noticed that uh, you admonished yourself after uh, Uh, playing a cover drive of magra which went for a four by the way so you know things that give you the confidence that you are doing some things and in terms of establishing your own zone etc oh god i can't particularly remember the shot that <laughs> in 2001 i think so long time ago but um i mean i guess sometimes you can hit fours which i guess you would be i think would be you know uh you might get the required result but the execution of or you know you might not necessarily be to the pitch of the ball or you might have just you know played a shot and it, it goes for four so uh, necessarily every four is not a good shot i mean it's good from the point of view of the score book no doubt about it <laughs> but uh, and it always helps and i used to always say that um the nice edge to third man all along the ground is actually a very uh, is a very satisfying shot as well because <laughs> it's frustrating for a bowler and that helps but um I mean indicators for me uh it really was uh, I guess feet I mean if, if I felt if my if I went fully if I judged length well if I went fully forward and the ball was pitched up and I went back when it was short I felt I was you know as long as I didn't get caught in the crease I I I thought I was generally playing quite well you know, that was a generally a good indicator for me you know Uh, that if I didn't get caught in the crease. I mean, you mentioned this uh, thing about you know the prof- life of a professional cricketer, where you go from series to series, match to match, city to city, etc. How is it that you mentally switch off after a test? This comes from uh, listener Venkateshwaran. Um, you know, how do you yeah. switch off? You know, when it, there is like t- two tests within three days. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when there are two, t- like, I mean, you got to find that. You, you each one should find his own way of uh, of switching off and i think that's quite really important that some as important as your preparation for the game and the practices you're putting in is being able to switch off and not being mentally exhausted when the next test comes along and when and sometimes there are quick turnaround times is actually even more important because there's not much you can suddenly learn text within one or two practice sessions mm-hmm. but it's just a question of getting mentally right and and for me it was different things you know i personally i like i like to go out and i like to explore things and you know meet different people in the evening try to take my mind away from cricket like read so i so i read different books you know books of other sports uh, so that i wasn't uh, constantly thinking about cricket uh, so yeah so i think and in time in time you develop i get a routine and a methodology that works for you but that is an important point that's a very important thing that if you want to obviously succeed at the international level with such so many tools and such quick turnaround times that you know it's almost as important to have that uh, off time and that balance you know that off time and that balance um you need to find that you know what works you recharges you uh, emotionally because that sometimes is more is the difference between success and failure not necessarily technical stuff and you know uh, extra nets which at that stage you know it's like uh, you know it's like studying for an exam i mean you know you can't you can't mug up 
uh, <laughs> you know what you know, the day before the exam and you can't in the morning of the exam you can't mug you know you can't just suddenly go there and think you'll learn this stuff so i guess you're better off staying relaxed and at least executing what you do know well and you know uh, mm-hmm. rather than cramming in the last minute so i think just finding that balance was important we talked about uh, preparations sometimes despite your best preparations when you're faced with the situations and the bowlers uh, and the conditions it's pretty hard to score the runs you know off the top of your head can you think of instances where you know it was bloody hard but but you got through that tough phase and uh, you know can you provide in any instance of a uh, specific scenario and uh, you know talk a bit about uh, what is it that you did to get through yeah i mean i guess at least at least <laughs> everything seemed a tough one you know <laughs> things back on it but um, but no I, i think when you look back on like first when i got 90 at perth and helped you know in 2000 and i think it was the 2009 series mm-hmm. uh, 2008 uh, no 2000 we went to the tour for 2007 yeah 2008 yeah 2007 8 so so 2007 8 and i got a 90 at perth and i sort of really struggled for any form or just think through that series and just fought my way through uh, i i get that's also an experience thing after some time you don't um, particularly start worrying about how you look but you just try and be effective and and i think you learn that you can't always you know go out there and, and some days will be a lot better than most but i think you know grinding out ugly runs and being able to fight your way through difficult periods um and sometimes that's important to the team uh, and the team needs those runs of yours so you've got to have that you know i guess patience to you know fight that too i mean that was the way i played i mean a lot of people hit their way out of trouble mm-hmm. that's their personality and that's their style and that works for them i mean you know but my way was to fight my way out of it which at times looked really ugly and, and you know terrible and especially if it didn't end up in a in a big score mm-hmm. um it looked uh, it not look like i was sort of It, 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 it sort of looked like I was, you know, struggling a lot, and I wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, getting the results that I needed. But when I got through the, then there are like innings when I talk about the '93, and there are many hundreds that I've got that later on, I, I, you know, I struggled initially, but I was able to later on get through that difficult period, and actually the the uh, rhythm and the timing and my feet started moving a lot better after 35, 40, 50 runs, and went on to make a big score that helped the team. So. each one was different and my style was a little bit to to sort of fight it out a little bit and then you know get through that period and i think you know that whole australian tour i got a 50 even in sydney i think you mm-hmm. know uh, um, yeah, i was struggling at one end and lakshman came in and just creamed it <laughs> and got 100 in no time and you know and sort of you think oh my god you know what am i doing here you know but but i guess that was my you know that was the way i had to play and uh, it worked a lot of times sometimes it didn't didn't work and you know, that's the way it is uh, let's talk about your uh, decision to retire you know you were the leading scorer for india in england in 2011 yeah. and you scored a 100 at home against west indies but then you decided to hang it up after the australia series they yeah. say great batsman for great batsman the eye goes first number one i want to know what does it really mean and was there any of it uh, playing a role in your decision i mean i look i thought that as well i mean i don't know i mean i got my eyesight i mean i i guess we have various tests and you check your eyesight and i don't necessarily think it does but the way you uh, the, the way medically you, your eyesight doesn't necessarily suddenly go into a three months or mm-hmm. suddenly at 39 it's you know it's, it's hard it's still I mean, I still don't need glasses, and it's still pretty much 20, 20 vision. So even today, so I, I don't know. It's hard to. I mean, I know I've I've read it myself uh, as well. But I mean, my decision to quit wasn't necessarily just based on on one tour. It was just a, I think a, a, a just a realization that I'd been I'd I'd had my time in Indian cricket, and I'd moved uh, I'd done what I could to the best of my ability, and it was a time for a new generation, I think, to take over. and just looking at the role so as to where you know where indian cricket was what was the situation what my role in it was you know at that stage i didn't really feel uh, it, it served any purpose you know uh, for me to be you know carrying on at that stage you know and i felt that run my time and it was a great journey and i enjoyed it um i mean uh, look after england if i had not done well in england maybe i might have decided to move on after england because then i felt i wouldn't have. but once i did well in england i knew that with australia coming in six months time mm-hmm. you know i could be better for an experienced i mean it didn't work out in the end and the, the results didn't show it and we lost still lost but 
I felt that I was uh, I was in good enough form and I was playing well enough to be able to go to Australia and as a senior player and try and you know um, try and play well for the team. Uh, but once Australia finished so many home series, uh, the couple of I mean eight test matches at home, ten test matches in fact at home before the next overseas trip, I, I just felt it was you know mm-hmm. uh, time to move on. Uh, a question comes from a listener, Forum Gosrani, and this is regarding mm-hmm. your captaincy and as a senior member of the side. In, in 2007, when you guys went to uh, England, you didn't have a coach, so you were the captain, number three batsman, and you had to care for the entire team as well. What was your strategy in handling the team and and you, you go on to win the series? Yeah, I mean, we did have some help. I mean, I must admit there was um, Mr. Chandu Bode, uh, you know, like an advisor, mentor, manager, you could call it that. Uh, Robin Singh and Vintish Fasad were sort of fielding and bowling coaches at that stage. Uh, so I did have a decent support staff. I mean, we still had a little bit of the remnants of the old. We had, uh, um, I think, uh, Johnny Gloucester was still our physio and, 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 and Greg King was the trainer. So there was a bit of a support staff around it. But yeah, I mean, I, I did sort of take a lot more in, in managing a lot of the affairs and running the show uh, during that trip and and, and and I guess even a little bit before that. But, um, I mean, it's, it's, it wasn't very different to, to anything else. I think as a captain, a captain, you have a responsibility to run and ensure that, uh, you know, your team is well prepared and, 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 and ready to play the big, you know, test match in terms of, you know, uh, tactics and in terms of ensuring that you get the best 11 on the park. Um, in, in, in terms of ensuring that they get the best facilities, in terms of practices and working with your support staff to ensure that you know, everything is put in place uh, to have a successful tour. Mm-hmm. Um, I, thought, I thought that sort of worked really well. I mean, one of the good things for us on that trip was we actually were able to play the same bowling attack for all the three test matches. And I think that was a great, you know, great. In fact, that does really help. It has a bowling really well. Sahir, Aarti, Srishant and Anil. You know, it's been the same for, for for all the four test matches, and I think that really helped in, in the result that we got. Um, and we were lucky not to have you know too many injuries on that trip. Couple more questions, then uh, yeah. let you go, Rahul. Um, one yeah. comes from Meenal. Okay. It was quite obvious that you had all the strokes in the book, and you could take any attack to the cleaners if you chose to. Yeah. Um, but on a regular basis, you didn't. Was that a choice? Of your own, or was it, uh, you know, in team's interest? Well, I mean, uh, I would love to have been able to play a lot more shots, and like you read rightly, there were times when when I did. It was not that I went out there to be ultra defensive or, um, you know, uh, be defensive all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, on on certain days when things flowed and my timing was right, and and you know, I, I would play my shots and it would work. Uh, there were other days when it didn't work and I had to, like we discussed earlier, I had to fight my way through it. I had to, you know, um, I, I had to bat a little longer to score the runs. Um, in time, I also realized what might be the most effective way of me scoring the most runs, which might help the team. Mm-hmm. And I sort of worked out on that formula, which, well, it was a, I think this sort of my style suited in some ways my personality also and also suited gave me the best chance to consistently score runs. You know, if I went out and tried to be too attacking, uh, I found that I played, uh, you know, I, I didn't pick, choose the right ball to hit for four. I, or I didn't, I, I made mistakes with short selection. So I found that playing in this rhythm and this cocoon seemed to help me. And I had my own rhythm and my own pace, uh, which consistently sort of got me runs at most times. Um, but, but no, I mean, it wasn't a conscious decision. I didn't really say, no, look, I'm going to be this different. I would love, I mean, like I said this very often, that I would love to have been able to hit shots like Sevag all the time and have that, <laughs> you know, carefree attitude. But it not, may not have necessarily suited my personality because if I got out, you know, sometimes the way he did, does, I, I would, you know, it take me a long time to recover from it. Then it would take Viru because he can, you know, just smile it off and he moves on. It's not an inherent in my nature to be able to do that. So then I had to, and each one of us is different. I mean, Gavaskar is not a Sevag and Gavaskar is not a Tendulkar or I'm not a Tendulkar and I'm not a Lakshman. So we're all different and we, you know, I think success at this level is about finding um, what works for you and being able to bring your personality onto the cricket field, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, one question comes from your diehard fan from Cape Town, South Africa, Nicole. Uh, okay. How has your you know, short stint as a commentator so far, offered you, you know, any new perspective or changed any of your views on the game? 
<laughs> it's been a short time. I mean, it's, it's been enjoyable. It's been different. I mean, I must say it's, uh, it's been different. It's, uh, I mean, you do still feel a little bit of butterflies in your stomach even before the commentary and, and before the start of a play, but it's nothing compared to playing. I think the pressure of playing and performing is is much, much more than, you know, as a, as a commentator or as a media person. Um, so, so that's been a good thing about <laughs> the easier thing about the commentary. It is, uh, I guess, a lot easier to do, but, um, but it's been fun. It gives you, I think it gives you a little bit of a different perspective. I think sometimes as a player, you're seeing things only from your and your team's point of view, but sometimes as a commentator where you have to be really neutral and you have to see the game, you know, as a neutral, not necessarily just as an, you know, mm-hmm. as an Indian or an Indian supporter or an Indian fan, you still are, but but I think as a commentator, you have that responsibility to try to try and be neutral. So, so I think you sometimes see a much wider and a bigger picture of things. Uh, that's not only just as a commentator. Just when you leave the game and the eight months and you just read stuff and you, you don't necessarily um, get clouded by having to produce constant results. So, so from that point of view, it's uh, it's good actually. It gives you, a, I think, a wider perspective of the game. Thank you uh, so much for coming thanks on the show, Rahul. It was uh, fantastic. No, thanks, a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Oh, just that one down the ground. This could be six as well. It's a big A. It's a huge six. Straight down the ground, almost into the dressing room. And that tells the story. What an innings this is. What are Eunice's being slaughtered? Couch Talk.